do you get just a feel for where your team's energy level is? I know, I mean, you obviously sat Steph and Draymond yesterday, just where those guys are, knowing what's ahead, and if you you have a, a, a lot of games to come here, just yeah. to get to the plan. Our guys good. are in a really good frame of mind. Um, you know, the, I think I might have mentioned it yesterday after the game, but the second half of the season, obviously we had a really good record, I think 27 and 12 or something. Um, it was. We also um, had a really good two-way balance, or, or uh, you know, both offense and defense in the top ten. I mean, we ha we had all the hallmarks of a really good team in the second half of the year, but it was more than that. It was also um, we had guys who were struggling early in the season. Um, you know, slow starts for Wiggs and Clay. You know, Draymond with his suspension. Um, one of the things I'm most pleased about with the second half is just the um, the sense of ease and peace that each guy seems to have. I think Draymond and Clay are in a great place as opposed to early in the season, and that matters and that affects other people. And uh, so I, I I really think this team has good chemistry. Um, Draymond has been a great mentor for the younger guys um, the second half of the year. Wiggs is in a really good place. Um, so it's uh, it, it's not just in our record and our offensive defensive rating, it's the vibe and it's a good vibe and um, obviously we're in a in a tough spot. We got to win two games just to get into the playoffs and anything can happen. But I do um, really believe in this group and and uh, I believe in karma. I I think this this group has earned some some good some good karma. So we'll see what happens. Was, was there anything tangible or any fulcrum point that you could point to that kind of triggered or ignited the second half of the season, or was it just guys getting comfortable and you know just time and reps? I mean, I think Draymond and Clay, um, those two guys getting into um, the right headspace um, triggered it. Because I mean, let's let's face it, they're they're Hall of Fame players. They've hung four banners here, um, you know, along with with Steph and and Andre. You know, um, that's that's the foundation of the team. Um, got a lot of other contributors and guys who have played well and won championships and Wiggs and Loon and you know, I mean, guys who have really contributed um, to this. But this team is about Steph Clay and Draymond. And so, first half of the season, neither one was was right um, emotionally, spiritually, however you want to put it. And once they turned the corner, um, it affected the whole team because that's how it works. And um, part of that is our defense just got dramatically better. Um, and that's where Draymond really comes in. Um, his, uh, and it's not only his uh, performance on the floor, but it's the way he impacts his teammates. And uh, just to, uh, his approach uh, the second half of the season has been um, fantastic. Could you elaborate on your belief in karma and why you think this team has earned it? I just believe you uh, you earn a lot of things in this game. You earn you you have to earn confidence, um, you know, and you you do that by um, putting the work in and um, going through the fire and uh, feeling adversity. And this team has had all kinds of that over the years. Um, but I also just believe that if um, if the team is in a good place and you uh, you know you have a good vibe in the locker room, um, there's a joy about the game that translates to good performances. And it all, however you want to express it, um, as a coach, you can just kind of feel it. And I've been very frank; I didn't feel it last year. Um, so this year, I've felt it. It doesn't mean it's going to happen. Uh, it doesn't mean we're going to win, but I think we have a better chance of of you know, really making a push this year than we did last. Steve, what do you remember from that elimination game last year in SAC, both the actual game and just the atmosphere in Sacramento? Um, you know, the, the atmosphere for all four home games there was amazing. It was uh, incredibly loud. Um, I think the main thing, honestly, that I remember is shaking Mike Brown's hand afterwards. Um, you know, when you... Uh, you get to these elimination games and you play uh, and compete against people you're really close with. You know, there's a sense of uh, of elation when you win, but um, you know that your good friend is um, is struggling and it hurts. And uh, 
those moments are always really um, difficult um, when you when you coach against a great friend. And so I was feeling, you know, great um, joy for our team and, and sorrow for Mike because um, of everything that he has meant to me over the years. Another moment of reflection, and maybe it speaks to what you were talking about before, just the evolution of your team, but in the, the – I think you guys played each other three or four times during the regular season, but all of those games were decided by one point. What do you remember from those games, maybe where it went right or wrong, and how much have both of your teams, yeah. the Wars and the Kings, changed since those early season matchups? Yeah, I mean, uh, the, the, game, the two games in Sacramento, I just remember the turnovers. We won one of them, but we tried to give it away. And the other one we did give away, and it was all turn, based on turnovers and poor execution. So uh, that's, uh, that's what I remember about those two. The one we lost here, I regretted after the game not taking a timeout. Um, we had a chance at the end, and I let the play play out. It didn't turn out. and So that's one when I beat myself up after that game. Um, I don't remember the other one. No, no, the other one was Clay hit the game winner. Um, and that's when I um, – that was really early in the season. And, um, again, I didn't take the time out, and he came off the screen, was open, and knocked it down. And um, So, you know, those are – those. I mean, it is crazy that all four uh, came down to one play. Um, as far as um, where each team is now, we're, we're, we're both very different. And uh, that's why I don't know how much we're going to gain from our earlier tapes of those games because, um, you know, they're without Herter and Monk. Um, Trace and BP are playing much bigger roles now than they did then. Uh, JK's gotten way better. Um, you know, Clay and, and Wiggs are both, and Draymond are all playing at a much higher level. Keon Ellis, um, you know, I'm not sure. To, uh, you know, he was on our scouting report for those four games. Now he's, you know, a starter and a hell of a player. So uh, there's a lot of difference, and it's been, what, four months since we saw them. So it's very different now. Following up Jason's question a little bit about game seven last year in SAC, uh, what sticks with you about Steph's performance that led to the 50 points? I, I saw a clip recently where it showed you talking to him on the bench and reminding him to breathe. And I mean, that, that was such a memorable game. Mm -hmm. And I'm curious your take on sort of what, you know, Steph sort of elevated into another realm with, with the season on the line. And how, yeah. how does he sort of adapt in these situations? I mean, he, you know, he's, he's one of the great clutch players in the history of the league. We know that. I think he um, led the league in efficiency this year, in playoff or player efficiency in clutch minutes. Um, we've seen him win championships, win finals MVP. I mean, Steph Curry is Steph Curry. So... That performance did not surprise me um, because he's um, he's that guy, you know. Um, he's him, I think Austin Reeves said. Uh, but I think um, what I what I remember about that game is we 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 extended a lead at the end of the third. I think we went up into the in the fourth by twelve or something, and so we had timeouts saved up. And the conversation you were referring to, I think I was telling him, we can take a timeout anytime you want just to get a couple of minutes of, of rest. And, and um, we were able to control that fourth quarter. But, I mean, he was sublime that game. So your unspoken message was you're not coming out? Yes, yes, yes. Use the timeouts uh, for, to rest because I'm not bringing you out. Exactly. Steve, what are the, I guess, tip-offs? How do you know when, when Wiggs is – engages when he's locked in because you mentioned earlier on you know he obviously had the slow start but he's come along what are the what are the ways that tell you besides obviously production uh i think you, you can you can see his on ball defense impacting the game and then um you, know, you can see him getting downhill uh to the rim and attacking and getting to the free throw line he he really turned his free throws around uh this season you know um i don't know where he ended up percentage wise but um from the first month or two to the last four months, uh, you know, he was, uh, he was fantastic. So I, th I think all of that together, you, see, you just see him attacking more offensively and you see him really getting into the ball defensively. What was missing earlier in the season? I mean, what was, was, what, what was it that you were expecting from him early and he wasn't able to deliver until later? Well, I don't think he had great rhythm. I think the, the absence uh, at the end of last year, um, hurt him, and then remember early in the year we were playing him with the two bigs, and and I think it did help him 
when we started playing smaller with uh, J.K. and Draymond on the front line with him because it opened up the floor a little bit. And maybe that, and you know, maybe I didn't do a good enough job early in the season of getting him into spots to attack. And I think we did a better job of that later on. But that was also the spacing um, that uh, that he was playing with. Seventy-five percent. Seventy for the year. About yeah. Eighty percent over the last couple. Of yeah, probably eighty over the last mm-hmm. three months. Yeah. Uh, going back to Game Seven last year, uh, Davion Mitchell uh, played fewer minutes in that last game. Instead, uh, Brown opted for Terrence Davis. This year, Mitchell's seen increased production, better numbers, as long as well as Keon Ellis, who you mentioned. Uh, what's the key in um, getting through what has been an improved defensive guard attack from the Sacramento Kings uh, in this plan game? What's the key to, uh, for us in terms of dealing with? The Sacramento's guard defense. Yeah, with uh, Ellis and Mitchell. I mean, it doesn't change from last last year uh, because uh, Davion played a big role in that series, um, and uh, Davis um, played the the Ellis role, um, and those guys did a really good job on Steph. Um, so um, you know that we, we're prepared for you know their ball pressure, and and um, you know I I think Mitchell is an excellent. On-ball defender Ellis is really good too, and, and we know that they'll be all over Steph. And we've got to be ready for everything. You know they've blitzed Steph in the past. Uh, they, they um, you know, they'll they'll hit him in the half court, double team. He's, we've got to we've got to have our spacing right and make sure we're executing against all that. Steve, you mentioned them not having Herder and Monk. What have you kind of noticed about what's different about the way that they play? Ellis is obviously a good defender. Teams have left him open, and he's hit some threes even yeah. too. Uh, but just what do you see about how different they're playing with their sort of new look? By necessity? Well, they're playing eight guys, um, you know, coming off the bench with Lyles and um, Len and, and Mitchell. And uh, so very tight, consistent rotation. Um, you know, they run a, a million – Pick and rolls with Len. He gave us some problems last year in the playoffs, so I'm sure he's part of the the plan. And um, yeah, I mean it's 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 different without Monk and Herder. Both guys are great uh, shooters, and and um, you know Monk's got the speed to get to the rim that has caused us problems. But Ellis has been, I think, one of the best finds in the league by any team. Um, he played on their G League team a year ago as their two-way guy, and they've obviously really developed him well. And he's uh, he's a really good player. So, I mean, it's just, the rotation's different. It's tighter. Um, guys will play more minutes, but it's you know it's still the the duo you know of um, Fox and Sabonis that their team is based on. Uh, how's Gary doing? Any any update on his status? Gary will be out for for this game, and if we win, he'll be out for the next play-in game as well. And then we'll reevaluate uh, if we're able to advance. Then we're hopeful he would be able to play in the first round. Steve, what's it like having two rookies that at least feel ready for a moment like this for the playoffs? And how does that compare to rookies you've had in the past? I mean, every team is different, and and this the way this team is configured. Um, you know, th- both those guys are, are going to play, and they're in the rotation. Um, th- in the past, we've had deeper teams. We've had different sets of circumstances. Um, you know, I would I would say um, we've had uh, young guys who weren't quite as experienced um, as these guys. Um, and um, so it was a l- longer development process. So, um, But I'm excited. I think, you know, I think they're ready to play, and... You know, they're, uh, it's going to be fun to, to see our young guys out there. Somewhat off topic, but you look back and the play-in, and obviously Steph had those big performances. You look at the stats, you can't really find those numbers anywhere, whether it's playoffs numbers, whether it's regular season numbers. Yeah. How would you maybe, like, decipher that? What should the league maybe do about finding those stats somewhere? These are playoff games, you know. Exactly, right. I think we just I, – I, I can't believe they're not included in the stats. Um and uh, yeah, the, the stats just disappear into the ether. It's uh, crazy. Um, but uh, hopefully, you know, if I don't, if I have a terrible coaching job tomorrow night and I completely screw up the whole game, at least it's invisible and nobody will ever remember. So, what's that? What plans? I don't even I don't even remember anything that happened. Yeah. <laughs> Besides GP, is you expect everyone else to be available? Uh, yes. Yeah. Am I? Yeah.
Uh, just kind of where is JK at, Steve, as far as, you know, he was out, he came back, he had the, the one good game, he kind of went out again. Uh, are there any concerns about just what you can get out of him, considering he's been so in and out and kind of having a different role also? Uh, you know, it, it's it's not ideal that he missed the games at the end and, and then, you know, looked like he needed some rhythm last night. Um, but it is what it is, you know. Um, it, Different players face different circumstances. You know, last year, I think Wiggs, his first game back was coming off of missing 35 games. Um, so um, you can't, you just can't account for some things. Um, so JK will, you know, will be out there. We're going to need him. And, um, you know, he's putting the work in every day. And hopefully he'll, he'll find his rhythm and, and do what he can do. How did your kind of personal matchups against the bonus or in, in, during this regular season go did you get a lot of minutes against him um i mean the only time i really got to play against him was in the preseason um the other few times we played sack were early in the year before i was getting a lot of playing time and so um just watching clips um listening to dre dre and loon on how to guard him um is the biggest thing that we've done so similarly De'Aaron's a guard who really likes to finish at, at the rim. What have you seen from either Dre or Loon or watching film on, on tips or tricks to, to slow him down? Yeah, um, I think the biggest thing with him is um, just loading the ball, especially in transition. Um, we transition, we're trying to take them away, take him away because when he gets downhill, that leads to spray out threes and he, he can really create and finish um, through contact. And so trying to not let him get a full head of steam. I asked Brandon this last night, did you watch the series between the Warriors and the Kings last season? Yeah, I did. What did you remember or, or what stuck out, stuck out to you from, from that seven game series? Um, it was a very physical, physical series. Um, the fans were engaged, everyone was engaged, um, high level basketball, um, shot making, and then obviously uh, game seven stuff, so. Obviously, it's still basketball at the end of the day, but have your coaches or teammates talked about kind of just the heightened intensity that comes along with postseason basketball? Uh, absolutely. Um, like in our walkthrough, in our film sessions, you can tell everything's at a high level. Um, all the vets are teaching. Um, they just keep reiterating not everything is going to be perfect, um, play through mistakes. Um, by the end of the day, it's still just basketball. You and Brandon have uh, extensive experience uh, in college, um, not just one year in, in the NBA. Do you feel like that helps in playoff pressure games like this, having that much experience in your college careers? Yeah, um, just playing basketball at a high level, um, playing for something. Um, obviously with me um, being the lead leader of my team and always having the opposing team trying to take me away. so. I've learned how to adjust through that. So the matchups, the scouting reports, and all of that stuff, I, I always hone in on. And then having Coach Woodson, um, he really helped me just look at different things that I can see throughout a game. And so trying to apply that to here. And bounce, bouncing off of that, is it ever a time where you or Brandon kind of think, you know, this is our rookie season, and boom, we're straight in the postseason? Just like the turnaround thought of, you know, especially in your case, of now being an increased part of the rotation, and suddenly it's playoff time. Yeah, absolutely. Um, the rookie, rookie season flew by, I'm not going to lie. But um, it comes full circle. I mean, we played against them. Um, the first preseason game I started against SAC and then coming back and we're playing them in the first playing game. And so um, just looking back at it, the season flew by, but um, you just got to stay locked in, stay uh, consistent. We just learned that Gary's not going to play tomorrow. Um, how big is that just in terms of team defense and especially with slowing down Fox? Yeah, um, Gary's a huge piece to our team. Um, now I think we're going to have to rely on Wiggs, uh, rely on JK, using their athleticism, their speed, their length against Fox. And so, um, but yeah, he's a huge piece, and we're going to miss him tomorrow. Dre, Dre, last year, y'all, y'all, uh, when you when you guys lost to the Lakers last year, it was like. I've never felt that before, like, you know, even this early. What does this feel like? Um, just like we need to go win the game. Uh, you know, I don't really, I don't know. <laughs> just feel like we need to go win. But it's exciting. Uh, you know, you know, it's do or die. Probably feels a little more NCAA tournament-ish. Uh, 
kind of give you that feel. But yeah, you know, we just gotta go win. What do you think about this matchup, and and what do you kind of think are the keys against a Kings team that has changed a little since the last playoffs? Uh, they've definitely changed a little bit. Um, you know, we I think we know this team pretty well, though, for the most part. Uh, nobody's changing that much unless you just completely change the roster. And the mainstays in their roster are still there. Uh, so they're going to run a lot of things through Sabonis. Uh, obviously, the, everything starts with the head of the snake, De'Aaron. Um, and everybody else kind of gets theirs off those two guys. Uh, you know, they're very much so a pattern team. Like, they, they got their things that they want to get to. Uh, and so, you know, going into the game and understanding that, uh, what, you know, the things that we'll be trying to take away and not let them get to those patterns. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, we, we know them well. They know us well. So, so it won't be no surprises. Following up on that, the past – times you guys have played them either this season or even last season it's much with the same group but trace has really emerged as a as a key contributor for you guys at center the past couple months he wasn't a key part of of those game plans how do you see him kind of helping defend a guy like sabonis um in this oh uh, well you know um <clears throat> trace has a great length he's very athletic he affects a lot of shots at the rim uh you know sabonis does all of his damage pretty much within 10, 10 to 15 feet. Uh, obviously, he can step out and shoot the ball, but a lot of his damage from a scoring perspective, obviously, he you know gets everyone involved. Um, you know, he's, if I'm not mistaken, I'm pretty sure he probably leads the team in assists. Um, and so he, you know, he gets everyone. But when it comes to scoring, it's a lot of it is around the rim. You know, and Trace uh, can affect some of those shots if. You know, but it starts with positioning, though. Uh, you know, Sabonis is great at creating angles. You know, so got to make sure you're good uh, with your positioning uh, against a guy like that. You know, he has all the step throughs and jump hooks and double step throughs that you can imagine. His footwork is great, so uh, it'd be a tough challenge. He's always a tough challenge. Uh, but like I say, you know, Trace got to use what he has in his strengths, which is his athleticism and his length. Draymond, it was kind of a joke at the beginning of the season how many times you saw you guys saw Sacramento. And then to know that they're your first game in this one, you, you kind of just said they know you, you know them. But as the more veteran team, does this short travel and knowing this team play in your hand at all, does it have any effect? Uh, I mean, I think the travel definitely helps me that it's an hour away, it's a quick bus ride down. Um, that helps. Uh, us knowing them helps, but on the flip side, they know us at well, and that hurts, you know. So, um, you know, overall, at the end of the day, coaches are going to put a game plan together. Uh, their coaches will put a great, great game plan together. Our coaches will put a great game plan together. But then you got to go out there and play, you know. And and you know, a lot of times you get in a in a series, and like at a certain point in the series, it's like, all right, you know me, I know you. Like, who's gonna make the small, the little plays to win? Uh, who's gonna come up with the fifty fifty balls to win the game? Because you know everything I'm running, I know everything you're running, and I feel like that's what this. It's obviously, not a seven game series, but I feel like that's what this game gonna come down to. Who's gonna make the necessary plays to win the game? You, obviously, the schedule's set. There's nothing you can do about it now. But the fact that it could, could be on the road Tuesday, if you win on the road Friday, if you win on the road, uh, what do you think about that? You know, it sounds pretty daunting, but uh, how are you approaching just that set of circumstances? Our last eight weeks has prepared us tremendously for that. Um, we've been on the road pretty much the last month and a half, two months, uh, quite a bit. Uh, we fared pretty well on the road all year, you know, so know we're capable of going to win some road games. Uh, and when this team's back is against the wall, I like how the group shows up. So, um, you know, it's not ideal, uh, but it is what it is, and that's what we're faced with, and we want to keep playing for um, much longer into this season. So just got to go get it done. Jeremiah, in the last year or two, as the Kings have gotten better, there's been more talk about, you know, a Northern California rivalry, quote unquote. And when you play a seven game playoff series, that obviously adds to it. I'm just curious if you could speak to the what the energy, what the atmosphere is like. I mean, you guys played a very memorable game seven. Steph drops 50. This year they overcame a big deficit. 
What what what's sort of the electricity like when you guys play the Kings the last few games? Uh, it's always a playoff type game. Like you feel that you go into um, into their arena, their fans want to light the beam and see us lose and beat the crap out of us, and they come in here we wa- we want to beat the crap out of them. A um, lot of familiarity amongst the two organizations, even beyond just us going out and playing in the money games that we've played against each other over the past couple of years. Uh, you know, Mike, Vivek, um, <clears throat> LB, like there's a ton of familiarity amongst the organization. So, um, yeah, I mean, that it kind of has brewed into that. Uh, but, you know, for us, it's another game you gotta, that we have to go win. It's not just another game in the sense of like, oh, it's just any other game. It's another game that we have to go win and we got to go get it done. Steph, Kirk just talked about how good the karma is with the team right now, how good the feelings are, the vibe is. Um, do you agree with that? And if you do, can you elaborate? What What's the feeling amongst the players right now? Uh, I think just in terms of optimism and confidence in who we are and what we can do any given night, you have to maintain that. You have to believe it. I think we do. It comes down to one game and then one game and then hopefully – uh, more, but we understand what, it, what it's like in this type of environment. A must-win scenario. Um, you know, the history of last year with Sacramento, so just the vibes are go win a basketball game, and we know we can do that. Uh, you got to go obviously prove it and execute it. A lot of mental focus today and, you know, these, this last month really. I know we've had some, some a couple letdowns, but overall we've been playing really well. Training in the right direction. Uh, our defense has turned the corner, and we've been able to sustain that. So, all those things point to can we just do it for 48 minutes, and, and we'll see you tomorrow. I know men- everybody mentions the pregame speech last year, but just what do you remember about that day, Game Seven last year? Just how you were feeling waking up, the actual game, the atmosphere, and everything kind of around it. It was a sense of urgency, obviously, just understanding we were in pretty good shape coming back from Sacramento winning game five. And they took it to us in game six, and we got embarrassed on our home floor. And as a matter of how you respond at that point, um, and just an understanding of whatever it took to bring the right energy back to uh, that game seven performance. Everybody talks about my numbers, but it was everybody was, you know, engaged and locked in, playing physical, playing with desperation. Um, and we're going to have to have that same type of mentality tomorrow. So it's kind of ironic, just everything that was built up to that game seven. This is technically a game seven type environment in the same building. So we got to do it again. Steph, two questions for you. Going back to what Tim asked, Steve was talking about how he believes in like basketball karma and you go about things the right way and you kind of put the effort in in the right places, the karma will come back to you. He said you guys didn't have the last year. I guess, do you believe in that same kind of basketball karma and put out good vibes, good vibes will find you as well? I believe in the present moment is you like that optimism and that idea that, yes, approaching everything the right way is and with the right intentions um i think for us it's about like having no agendas it's just about how can we win and you know turn our season around we've had some tough breaks we've had a uh, tough break to our family um you know just been a, a, a wild year all the way around uh but the present moment is can you galvanize the right energy to go you know win one game I'm sure there's plenty of teams over the course of NBA history that felt like karma was coming to them and it didn't. Uh, some did, it's just how sports are in general. Uh, but the approach is what he's mentioning and talking about. And I think we've, you have to control what you can control. And I think we're in a good position there. However it ends up, uh, it won't be because of a lack of effort if we don't get it done. And you guys are very familiar with each other your team and, and the Kings, but how different is this matchup given the personnel that maybe wasn't involved earlier and now is for both for both teams? How different is it? Uh, we'll see. I think it's weird because we haven't played them in a long time. Uh, we had a lot of matchups earlier in the year. 
you know, I know they're without Malik and, and Herder, so they have some other guys that haven't been a part of their rotation. We had some guys that stepped up, like Trace and BP, guys that really weren't part of the rotation the last time we played them. So there's some unknowns on both sides, but the known is uh, the the core guys who were in that series last year. We play each other four times a year. Like, we know each other pretty well. Coaching staff know, themselves, know each other really well, so – Adds a little another dynamic to it, but it should be fun, uh, fun competition tomorrow. Sounds like a teammate of yours inched past you for the free throw championship. Yeah, I'm gonna see if they rewrite the rules on. I don't know what 125 free throws, uh, what that qualification is, but he got it done. How, how much friendly? I remember two years ago when you and Jordan were vying for that. There was some friendly banner. I think you texted him before the last game in New Orleans and reminded him he couldn't miss. Yeah. Was there any friendly banner with you and Clay, or did it sort of sneak up on you because he hadn't reached the threshold? I had no clue until Raymond told me today. Um, I knew I was up there percentage-wise pretty much all year. Uh, I think Dane was up there too, but uh, I had no clue. Clay was uh, ineligible until until last game, and he made all five, so shout out to him. Did he say anything to you today? He had no clue either. So he said, oh, that's cool. <laughs> That's all you got. And that was a comment. That was a whole conversation right there. Uh, he didn't even realize he gets a little maybe a plaque or trophy or something. I presented Jordan with his when he got it. Uh, I guess Clay missed that whole ceremony because he had no no idea that there's a uh, a trophy acknowledgement for the, uh, the stat leader right there. So the trophy was a surprise to him. Any solace that he kept it on your team at least? No, I hate losing. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely not. But uh, I guess I'm, I'm, I'm extremely proud of my teammate, yes. <laughs> I was uh, just talking to Wiggs, and he was saying that, uh, yeah, you guys have been in his ear, um, and it may be a factor. He said he appreciates that and it lets, you get, lets him know that you guys, how you guys feel about him. How important is it that you guys stay on him about just doing what, he can do, what you know he can do and sometimes it, you know, hasn't been able to do? That message is for... Everybody, it's just a little louder when it's a guy like Wiggs who has performed at the highest of levels um, and helped us tremendously win a championship. Like, he's fully capable, and uh, what he has to do is not easy. I think that's something people miss just in terms of he usually has the assignment to guard the best perimeter guy. Uh, we want him to be aggressive offensively as well and create – uh, shot attempts, create a good offense, be you know aggressive, attacking the rim, take shots that he knows he's supposed to take. Um, and what he has to do, it requires energy, it requires a physicality and a consistency. So, but he's fully capable, and so that's um, it's like that that parent-child relationship where you like not to say he's a child, but to say like you only ask somebody to do what you know they're capable of doing, and um, that's that's our energy towards Wiggs all the time, and. I think he understands how important he is to us reaching our full potential as a team. And you've seen that over the last month or so. He's um, he's answered the bell, so that helps. And for you, how different is the pre-playoff or pre-postseason prep for you at 36 than it was at 26 mentally more? I mean, I mean, I mean when you're young, sometimes you, you look at it a certain way. But as you've been through all these wars over the years, how different is you as you approach the playoffs, What's, if it is at all? It's a little bit just more of a comfort zone of understanding what that environment is like. I think when you're 26, like, you're just real antsy and anxious and uh, you're, you're, you're kind of living off of that kind of just youthful, you know, um, energy that, that kind of carries you through. Even if mentally you don't quite, you know, understand how to execute at that level, you can kind of get by, I think, for us. For me, it's like locking in just on the the strategy that we're trying to implement on the on the game plan, understanding what I need to do to get my body ready. But uh, I think this last two weeks has kind of been just patience, just understanding that this, I mean, uh, like I said, this year's been all up and down, and the playoffs are the most fun time of the year, and we just want an opportunity. And even sitting here right now, 24 hours from the game, like I feel very comfortable and and ready for the moment. So that just comes with all the reps that you've had over the years. 
talked about the defense turning the corner. How, how do you view where your defense is now and why it's turned the corner? Obviously, Trace entering the starting lineup has changed a lot of the geometry. Uh, you could look at Draymond, Trace, and Wiggs. I think those three guys especially um, being available and finding a chemistry, um, you know, sure enough, that front line, I think our rotation has been a little bit more predictable over the course of the last month. That's helped us, you know, from game to game, find a rhythm. And then it's just a commitment to that end of the floor. You know, every night, uh, you know, one effort, second effort, third effort, being able to rebound, all the details that aren't really fun to talk about. But when you see it and you, you show it, it's, it's amazing to watch. I think our defense in the last – 30 games or so, I think was, you know, top seven or something like that. So that's by, that's no accident. It, it, and it's helped us turn our season around. So can we sustain it for Tuesday, Friday, and, and this weekend? Steph, a couple of years ago in the play and you had 39, 37, but those stats don't count towards regular season, playoffs. Just kind of want to know your thoughts on that, what the NBA should do about that. What the NBA should do about? I don't, am I like? Am I, I don't, it sounds like I might be like the leading play, <laughs> play, play in scoring. I don't know if that's a stat. I really don't care because hopefully you're not in a play in that often where it becomes something that you're aware of. I hate the fact that there's a history <laughs> of performances there, so uh, it's our job to try to you know stay out of that you know uh, each year. But that's the hand we're dealt, so just kind of a weird kink in the system, I think, a little bit. And then with BP and Trace, what's, a lot, what's the luxury of having two rookies that at least feel ready for the moment like this? It just gives us depth. I think, I mean, they've gotten you know better each and every game throughout the season. They've made their presence felt. They're in the rotation for a reason. Uh, Trace is starting for a reason. Like, they give us uh, so much on either end of the floor. The playoffs are a different atmosphere, and you know, like you said, you, you're glad that they got enough reps that you can throw them in there tomorrow. Um, they understand what they need to do. The, the cool part is the playoffs, you don't really have to do anything different than what you've been doing. It's just don't get overwhelmed by the by the moment, by the environment. Just play basketball, have fun. Um, I remember my first playoff experience, and you, you you know that going in, but that first you know six minutes, first quarter, it's – uh, it's a rush because it's a different feeling, different vibe. So if they get you know through that, they'll be fine. Earlier in the season, when things go weren't going so well for this team, it was like at least on the outside, can they keep this together? Is this thing still going? Um, obviously, it's been much more successful second half of the season. Do you think this team has proven enough that no matter what happens, you know, next week or so? You're keeping it together, or do you think there are still some things that you need to prove this team needs to show in order to make sure that things are sustained in the next season? I'm not really concerned about this next season conversation. I think it's, it'd be pretty obvious it'd be a disappointment if we're not in a, uh, a playoff series and have an opportunity to, to compete at that level. You can make up whatever narrative uh, that that would bring up, but Right now, I think it would rob the opportunity we have this week and, and hopefully, you know, going into a playoff series to, um, you know, give ourselves a chance. And I think it's, it's important that uh, we stay in that, in that mentality. Don't worry, worry about anything else. It was certainly seen, though, from that was like game seven last year was kind of like justifying this group. I mean, I think even some of your management might have said it afterwards. Do you remember thinking about that going, or were you just thinking about that moment, uh, or were you thinking some big picture too? No, I think it was more, I mean, that you can't avoid those conversations because they've been hovering over us since 2019. Um, and obviously winning that championship helped a lot and proved that we're still capable. I think we're still in that element, but I mean, when you're out there on the floor as a player, performing at that level uh, and understanding what's expected of yourself and uh, your team, like, 
that the environment brings the best out of you just because you're trying to win basketball games. Uh, there's no real other implications that you carry, um, you know, out there on the floor. When it's all said and done, those thoughts definitely come in because as a human being, you're worried about what's next. But as athletes, when we're out here, we don't we don't get to this level by worrying about anything other than the moment. So um, I think we've been pretty good at that and got to do it again.